Hello everybody! So today I'm going to take you on a little journey. I'm actually going to be drafting two new projects. Wow, um, I can't believe that actually. <laughs> I've been so focused on my manuscript that I've got going that I'm going to submit to Pitch Wars that I haven't really thought about anything else. I've had ideas here and there and I've worked on plays, but not really any new novels, so we'll see. I think I might try a variety of different drafting methods today in this video. Might do the Save the Cat Beat Sheet, might do uh, Susan Denard's methods. Both? Both? We'll see. I'm just hopping in on Brick Wright's live stream and going to work on my projects. So let's go. I have to actually open up the documents. This is the wrong one. Whoops. No, not not a new document either. Oh man. I'm 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 a mess today. Let's okay. All right. Let's see this. <laughs> so, as you can see, I already have a bit of drafting done. I have some names. I have the beginning of a chapter or two. We'll see. Um, it's at 580 words now, but not really a lot of definitions, so let's make it something. Also be helpful here would be to plug in my laptop. Um, I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Alright. Ta-da! Save the Cat writes a novel. The last book or PDF a novel writing you'll ever need. Okay, introduction to the 15 beats. So let's do act one. Opening image. Cool. Actually, I might just copy and paste this. Let's do that. So for this, I'm just going to do a time lapse. So let's write. So it's now the next day, and I'm just going to show you what I drafted, kind of what my goals are. I did only the first 1%, 1%, 10 10%, 5%, I don't know what percent I did, but it's something, so I'll show you, come on. <laughs> I don't know why I said come on, I'm just going to show you my computer screen. So yesterday after the live stream, I pretty much plotted out act one of my first idea. So that's up until the debate, so 10% to 20%, a reaction sequence in which the hero debates what they will do next. I think it's definitely easier for my new fantasy project that I'm coming up with because it seems like, at least in the hero's journey, narrative that I'm sticking with, it seems like there are clear-cut chapters or moments where the hero should decide all these things. In my contemporary, not so much, but it seems like the contemporary so far is just very, very low stakes compared to the fantasy one. I don't know if it's just because Obviously, contemporary doesn't have, like, dragons and swords and whatever um, I'm going with. I don't even know if it's going to be dragons. I don't even know, like, the main um, monster or fantasy creature in my first project. Ah! I think the way it only feels like low stakes is because I'm comparing it to my fantasy idea, where obviously the stakes are going to be bigger to the point of life or death for Shakespeare camp, not, no, I don't really want to find death at a Shakespeare camp, especially not in this book. Or at least not with what I'm going for. A Shakespeare murder mystery, now that would be something, but not something that I'm writing today. So I think I'm ready enough to go on to Act 2. So let's start. Let's start. Act 2, here we go. I'm gonna 
take you outside where we're gonna finish plotting this. I say we as if we're writing this together. Nope, only me. I'm gonna take you outside, we're gonna finish plotting this, and we'll see where I end up. Okay. I just finished plotting out Act 2 for both of my projects. I feel like a broken record, but it is definitely harder for my contemporary, but I think the way I'm drawing on my own experiences and my own memories, I guess, um, it's definitely getting easier with like planning out actions as opposed to what my main character is thinking. <laughs> I suppose that might be a given that obviously memory, or no, not memories, um, actions, like things the main character is actually doing are easier to plot out than just what the main character is thinking, which is always good. So I actually feel pretty good about both my contemporary YA and my fantasy YA. I still don't know what the monsters are, but I... I think I know about this, the themes for both now too because that was really troubling at the start. I Themes are very very abstract and they usually seem just very very off base and I feel like I can never incorporate them properly when I'm writing. So writing it down here and writing out a couple possible different themes was also very helpful because it gives me a chance to choose or pick them all. Maybe, maybe that would be too much. But now I'm going to plot out, I guess, act three for both of these. So let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Yay. So before I go on, I just want to show out my original outline for my current project where I've separated it into chapter number, main plot, um, different things in the story, and basically I don't know if I'm going to be doing that with this, uh, with these two stories yet. I only really did it when I did Camp NaNoWriMo, so... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. See, I divided it up into places and story importance. And same thing with chapters and emotional states. <laughs> so also in this video, I've decided that I'm going to use another method, which is Susan Denard's magical cookies. Susan Dennard's? I don't, I really don't know. I really don't know. Ah! So I'm going to be using the magical cookies. I'm going to plot out the magical cookies that I want for each book. Maybe I'll get into some scene plotting, some chapter plotting, some character plotting. We're going to we're going to cover just a lot of the bases here. So many bases. Okay, so I actually skipped ahead and I because I wanted to concentrate mostly on magic cookies. So I'm here on how I plan a book part 4, coaxing out the magical cookies. And I'm going to write down why I want to write this story. And then I'm going to write down the scenes that go along with my inspiration. Also, those could be little images or little clips of story that you can't wait to write. Susan Denard calls them those scene snippets are my magical cookie scenes. I don't want to forget the almost kisses or the creepy murder scenes when I draft because they are what I'm most looking forward to writing. So let's do this. Okay, so right here Susan Denard is talking about these magical cookies and in her words they're what she calls those sparks in a story that make you want to write. It's the romantic tension that you love and just can't wait to reach. It's the high action fight you're, w you're itching to write or the awesome sneakiness of your villain. It's basically the reason you wanted to write this book at this moment. 
but I'm going to let you in on a secret, and this is the key to happy drafting, because you've got to stay happy or you'll burn out before your career even begins. It's also the key to good writing, because when you love what you write, the passion transcends the page. Every scene in your story must be a magical cookie scene. And I also want to say that I'm trying out this book by Rachel Aaron, 2,000 to 10,000, so I guess 2K to 10K, how to write faster, write better, and write more of what you love. I don't know if I'm going to cover this book all the way in the video, but I'm definitely going to reference it. So let's go. So I wrote down my magical cookies. I even did some brainstorming for a lot of the names in the stories. I'm pretty sure I changed my main character for my fantasy story like three times already now. Probably her best friends like seven billion times. We'll see. Um, but for both of them, I wrote down why I want to write these two stories. I wrote down the scene ideas. They were more concrete definitely for my contemporary one because a lot of it, like I've said, I'm just drawing from things that I've done in so many different drama programs, I guess, programs, camps, Shakespeare camps, I don't know. But the first one, I pretty much had a lot of ideas, which is great, so like, but my ideas were more abstra abstract than anything. I have a lot of shenanigans and campfire scenes, training montages, traveling montages, so a lot of montages. Maybe this story is just going to be all montages and you don't actually ever see the plot. I basically followed all the magical cookies. Susan Denard goes into writing scene screenplays where you write down the bare bones of your scenes, but I don't think I'm ready to do that. I honestly think I might go on Pinterest and make a couple boards and maybe start the whole chapter outline that I showed you guys earlier. So lots of things to be done, lots of things to be done. I do think that the magical cookies are definitely really helpful because they're letting me know what I want to include, they're making me write down exactly what I want to include so that way even if a plot goes off the rails I can look back at this and say hey this is what I wanted to do this is why I wanted to do it so let's do it okay and there you have it folks that's my new Pinterest board that's my uh, whole book right there so videos over thanks for watching everybody Hey, so it's Haley from the future. I just wanted to end this video by saying that I did finish my basic outlining of Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Fleshed out my magic cookies. Probably went back and forth on the characters' names a bajillion times, so more than I said before. I also actually ended up writing a little synopsis today. Cute little synopsis. Basically more little more than a glorified pitch, honestly, and I think that I might be ready to start writing. We'll see. Like I said before, I don't want to do the concrete outline that I've done for NaNoWriMo in the past, pretty much because I want to save that for NaNoWriMo this year, and when I want to make it as part of my process, maybe for Preptober, but I think that I do want to brainstorm some more in this series, in some more videos, maybe world building, maybe another prepping guide for the characters, we'll see. But I just wanted to say that honestly making this video has been really really helpful because it held me very very accountable for actually going through on this project where last week it was just an idea based off this Netflix show that I watched and was angry that there weren't um, many girls and now I actually have a pitch and characters and magic cookies and a basic plot outline so we'll see where it goes. Thanks for joining me on this journey and I can't wait to update you all.
as we go through. Please leave a like and comment below and subscribe for more brainstorming. Join me on this journey as I go through this new project, also my Shakespeare camp project. We'll see. Just have fun. Join me. Thanks for watching, everybody.